two, one. Hey everyone and welcome back. It's been a long time since I made a video. A gosh darn long time. Um, I made a, a soundtrack for a smartphone game that, uh, that was taking up a lot of my time. Um, and I just wrapped it up and uh, I wanted to do a series of videos that uh, broke down how I made the music for that. Uh, much like I did with Venture Kid. But uh, before I do that, I think uh, I have some unfinished business here with our good friend, the Falcon. So uh, the video I wanted to make is uh, showing how to add vibrato to a patch in Falcon. Because uh, it's not something that uh, was super intuitive to me off the get-go. Um, so I wanted to uh, to help out everyone else who might be, uh, you know, new with Falcon and trying to figure out what, what the heck is going on here. So um, I made a little patch here, uh, just a dinky little patch I loaded in the analog stack. Um from Falcon's synthesis selection. And, uh, let's see, I've got my... I don't need that on yet. Uh, yeah, get out of there. Okay, because uh, this, this is the fifth time I've made this video. Because uh, I got this new setup, as you can see, and everything is just falling apart on me left, right, and center. Batteries dying, things not being turned on. Woo! So anyways... Let's add some vibrato to this patch, because it's, uh, it's a patch you want vibrato on. Um, one of the reasons why uh, I think this is a good video to make is because uh, Falcon by default lets you have pitch bend, but no vibrato. So, uh, you know, it's just something that I, I want some help here. So I had to figure it out, and now I will show you how I figured it out. Um, not that I'm taking big credit for that, like, oh, uh, I did such great work here, but, uh, you know, looking at this is, is kind of daunting at first, so I'll take a, a little pride in figuring this out. So, uh, Falcon, um, I don't know why that's doing that. Hey, what are you doing? Why are you being goofy? Anyways, um, you can see here, uh, whenever something is being modulated, um, in Falcon, there's a little line that goes and moves. Like, you can see this one's got an LFO working on it, kind of like a really slow vibrato. And, uh, I want to, uh, make it so the pitch bend does a nice little vibrato like this. But, on its own. Right, so, uh, what you do with any knob, if you wanted to add some kind of modulation, whether it be an envelope or, uh, or an LFO, is just right-click it and then add modulation. And uh, you got a lot of choices here. It's really confusing off the bat. What do I do? Well, sir. Um, first, I just got to break down. Uh, Falcon is basically broken down onto three tiers. There's a program tier, a layer tier, and a key group tier. This program tier is basically like your master bus. So if you add something to the program tier, it has the potential to affect every sound that comes out of uh, Falcon. No matter how many things you tweak or how many things you add, they all go through this one tier. Um, and then the layer tier is if you want to say have a patch that has uh, like an arpeggio in the background and then a bass and then a lead, like, you know, a more complicated patch would be on your layer. So you can add stuff to just the arpeggio, say, or just the the bass or, or whatever you have, noise or something. And then a key group, if you add stuff to the key groups, basically every time you hit a key in that layer, um, it has its own LFO or its own ADSR and stuff like that. So you can really make complicated patches. And that's how Falcon can really chew through some CPU if you start uh, adding a bunch of crap to the uh, key group layer. Um, well, we don't need to do that. We want to use uh, an LFO on the program layer or tier. Uh, because that's kind of uh, the way most synthesizers were. They would just have an LFO that was like, hey, if you need to use an LFO, send some stuff to it. Um, so that's what we're doing here. So... Uh, We've got it defaulted to be affecting our patch, but not the way we want it to. Like, that's not what we want. Uh, we want it to be triggered by the mod wheel. So um, right now what we need to do is hit the metronome button here so we can get uh, it on the BPM of whatever our uh, project's on. So I like a good eight, eight try. Yeah. And then here, uh, we basically want our mod wheel to be doing this, affecting the depth. And that's as simple as uh, right-clicking, add module, like, we right-click this knob just like we right-clicked that knob. Um, so what we're going to do here, though, is instead of add, like, another 
envelope or modulation to this, what we're going to do is add uh, what they've so uh, politely added as a default, the modulation wheel, just up here. Right click, add modulation wheel. Because they know that you want to do some stuff down here with the mod wheel. And it's as simple as that. But, uh, you know, I don't really like the way vibrato sounds when it's a sine wave. I like it when it's like an actual metronome tick, 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 instead of like sort of swimming back and forth. So I like it like this. Um, but we're not done yet. Um, one thing I also like to do, since I'm not, uh, I'm not especially a good keyboard player, like I can play with one hand and then do a little mod wheel stuff over here, but if I need to do like an intricate, I got like have my left hand over there just as sort of a, uh, anchor. Um, so how do you add vibrato then when you have both hands on the keys? Um, there's, uh, as far as I know, there's not an elegant way to do it, um, where you can use the one LFO and like right click and add an extra thing. Like I'm not sure if I if I hit channel after touch here, I think it just switches it to after touch. It doesn't include both. But I could be wrong. But uh, I found that it's just easier to add another LFO because heck, I got a powerful PC. I don't need to worry about uh cycles and RAM and whatever thing. Um so we've got another one just affecting it right off the get-go, which we don't want again. So you hit the metronome button and you uh Change it back to the same timing. We try, right click, and add channel after touch. So now we got two LFOs, and uh, at any given moment, I can use after touch or the mod wheel or both. And they sort of stack a bit. Um, but I like after touch. This is just a personal preference. I like having my after touch a little more sensitive than my uh, mod wheel. So I've got it set to double, so it'll it'll swing farther. That's basically, uh, that's the extent of this tutorial. Um, I don't know if it needed to be made. Hopefully there were some people out there that like just wanted it broken down so you could see. Because um, the big thing that uh, that I wanted to do right from the get-go with the Noodle and Round series was just show you how like an average person struggles with these uh, VST, <clears throat> VSTs and how they overcome such adversity. So I've done that here. Uh, you've seen how the everyman would add vibrato. There might be a better way to do it. I don't know, but that way works for me. And so that's what I've been using for my own patches that I've been making and using in projects. And uh, there's probably a lot more you could do with it. Um, I guess uh, I could explain the, um, the little pink guy you see shooting around over here. The pink guy represents the, uh, the modulation affecting the knob. And the blue shows you how far uh, the modulation will go. So if it's if it's all the way up, the modulation can affect 100% of it. So for aftertouch, for example, if I'm pushing it, it can, like, as hard as I can push, it goes all the way up to 100%. But if I've changed the blue knob to, say, just go to 50, um, then as hard as I push now only goes up to 50. So there's a lot you can play with there. Um, you can also uh, achieve a similar effect by switching this to be higher or lower semitones. Now 100% is less or whatever. So they give you a lot of options here. Uh, and it can get pretty confusing real quick if you don't keep track of like your own style. So I like, uh, I guess I like uh, changing the semitones instead of changing the depth. But, but everyone's different, different strokes. So uh, yeah, you can see um, I've added an LFO up here to the pulse width modulation. Um, that was done in the exact same way. Just uh, I right-clicked up here, added uh, an LFO. This time on the uh, I think the key group layer because I wanted each different key to have its own uh, LFO um, instead of uh, one uniform one, which might sound better if it was uniform. But whatever. So there you go. Uh, that's how we add some vibrato to Falcon. Bring some life to your patches. Um, okay, so that's it for this video. Um, I want to make some more, uh, some more videos uh, coming up here. 
Uh, but first, I want to thank everyone who's subscribed over the last couple months, especially since I don't have any new videos. Um, that means a lot to me. I really appreciate people subscribing to these because, uh, uh, you know, I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm just like, I don't even have a goal for these, really. So it, it's nice to see that, you know, these have at least helped a, a couple people figure out Falcon. Um, I have, uh, you know, it doesn't just have to be Falcon. I'm happy to keep diving into Falcon, especially if people have uh, requests or something like that. Um, one thing I... I can definitely do is uh, like I happen to be kind of a UVI fanboy. Like I've paid for every one of these sound banks, and I'm not like uh, money bags. I'm not raking in the dough. So this is like just a big portion of my expendable income goes to this crap. So might as well uh, make some videos on it. But I, I don't know um, if you guys are wondering about how some of these sound. Um, I'd be happy to load them up, make a vid on uh, the presets, or you know my own brand of goofing around on there. Um, Cameo's one that I bought recently that I actually really enjoyed and I've learned my lesson the last couple times because I keep erasing over the patch I, I just made um, So if I have to make this video for a sixth time, I'm gonna make sure I leave my patch there But uh, what I'm gonna do is uh, open up in a new patch um, Let's give you control so here you got cameo. It's one of uh, UVI's more recent libraries Love this patch by the way um, one thing that like I, I can definitely do for future videos if you guys are interested is not just do a, a preset video but one of the, the coolest things about Falcon is um, you can actually hit the edit button here and see how they made this patch like this is a, a premium uh, content that they've made and released on their website but within Falcon you can go in and just muck around do whatever you want like uh, you can say add your own or add some of Falcon's presets, like... Bleh, that's not good. Uh. Yeah. So, like, here, right away, I just... I mucked around with, uh, you know, their... Their preset and added my own. And, uh, if you... If you've made your own patches, uh, you can... Toss those in as well. Let's, uh... So oh, here's just a, a pluck going through cameo. Like, let's see. Well, actually, uh, it doesn't work exactly as good as that because I forgot that some of these are probably on key key group layers. But um, you can still fiddle with it. You can you can see how it can be fiddled with. So there's lots to uh, to be explored here. Um, and I'd be happy to do it. Uh, other than that, uh, upcoming vids. So this new project I just uh, wrapped up, it's all Sega Genesis music. Um, or more accurately, like the uh, the YM2151 uh, chip, uh, which is like Sega Genesis, but with a couple more channels. Uh, but it's Genesis for, for all intents and purposes. Um, so yeah, it's going to be kind of an FM series. I want to do finally uh, a big thing on FM, and I'm, I'm kind of mulling around the idea of uh, if it should be just FM... The history of FM, like go all the way back and show like why FM, like where it came from and how it sounds now, or if I should just do why FM sounds interesting to me. Uh, both of those potentially cool video uh, series themes. So if you guys are interested in that, let me know. Otherwise, I'll just have to figure it out and make the videos anyways. But uh, the good news is I've got my setup set back up. Uh, I had a lot of setbacks with um, I, I plugged something into my tower. Uh, headphone jack and it popped up this real tech GUI that I'd never seen before and I, I was like oh I should fiddle around with this thing to get you know more optimized system and ended up just like nuking the ability to record with OBS which is what records my screen capture and then like have Cubase open it just nuked that capability and it was really frustrating so I figured that out finally and uh, so now I can actually start making videos on a regular basis again um, so look forward to that and uh, thanks for sticking around everyone um, I guess we'll see you on the next video, uh, which should be probably soon. Okay. I don't, I still don't know how to end these, so bye. Hey, thanks for watching this video. We'll see you guys next time. Feel free to subscribe to this channel.